this video, I will demonstrate the process of creating emission reports for the whole reporting year, which applies to cases where the ship is owned by the same company during the full year. The submission of the emission report is included in this video as well. The creation of the emission report in TETIS MRV system is performed in two steps. First step. Company user reports emissions data monitored during the reporting year. Second step. Company user creates the emission report based on the previously reported emissions data. The reporting of the monitored data under MRV regulation can be performed in TETIS MRV system as two alternative options. First option assumes that the user records all voyages and port emissions on a per voyage basis. Then the system's automatic data filling functionality allows the user with a single click to aggregate all the relevant data during the selected reporting period into an annual emissions record. The second option is to monitor the activities on a per voyage basis outside the system, then perform all the necessary calculations and aggregation steps externally, and only afterwards manually enter the full period data into the annual emissions record in the system. Please be aware that the second option is recommended for ships falling only under MRV scope and not in fuel EU, because fuel EU maritime regulation requires a per voyage reporting in the system. Now let's go back uh, to the system and let's use this ship as an example for the creation of the emission report in this video. Before creation of the emissions report, we need to report the monitoring data collected for this ship during the year. In this case, we will follow the first option, recording in the system all voyages and port emissions on a per voyage basis. The emissions and monitoring data of the ship is registered in the ship record. Therefore, we should click Actions, Ship, Edit. Voyages and port emissions shall be registered in the according tabs Voyage, Port, Emissions and the aggregated figures shall be reported in the Annual Emissions tab. Let's start with reporting emissions on a per voyage basis. Let's open Voyage Emissions, then click Add Voyage Emission button. For each voyage, we need to identify the port of departure and port of arrival. Notice the difference between the non-EA port where the port is entered as a free text and European port, where the port is selected from the list. Then we shall proceed specifying time at sea in this tab. Our ship does not have any ice class, therefore we cannot discriminate time at sea on ice. Our regular navigation shall exclude time spent at Anchorage. However, in case time spent on Anchorage is relevant to understand the consumption of a voyage, the system allows to report it separately in the dedicated field. Then we move to the next tab, Distance Traveled, where the distance through ice is also disabled for the same reason. In the tab Cargo and Transport Work, depending on the ship type, 
you need to specify cargo mass either in tons or as a deadweight carried. The system then calculates the transport work. A CO2 equivalent emissions tab is for the recording the fuel consumed during the voyage and related CO2 emissions. Let's proceed with clicking Add Emissions button. The voyage emissions can be based on the fuel consumed or providing the direct emissions values. This process can be repeated for all the fuels used in the concerned voyage by clicking Add Emissions button. After all the information about the voyage is recorded in the According tabs, click Save button to save this voyage record. You shall repeat the steps uh, for recording other voyages during the reporting year. Now let's open Port Emissions tab to report on a port activity basis. Let's start with clicking Add Port Emission and specify the port call data. In the CO2 equivalent emissions tab, the process is similar to the voyage emission recording based on the fuel consumed. However, in this case, you should specify if the consumption recorded is related to the movement at port or at birth. Important to note that emissions uh, report requires that consumption at birth is well identified. In case applicable, one or more differentiating criteria can be selected from this drop-down list. You shall repeat this process for all the port calls throughout the reporting year. After all voyage and port emissions are registered, we can move to the tab Annual Emissions. Click Add Annual Emission button. And the first tab is to identify the reporting period. For the reporting period covering the whole year, the system automatically adjusts from and to fields. After the reporting year is selected, the other tabs appear. You can notice the difference in the names of the tabs depending on the selected year. Starting with reporting year 2023, the tabs are adjusted for ETS legal scope obligations, while the years before 2023 correspond to MRV reporting, which was applicable before that year. Besides the carbon dioxide or CO2 emissions, ETS legislation considers also other greenhouse gases, namely methane or CH4 and nitrous oxide or N2O, which are included in the calculations of the CO2 equivalent. You can notice that CO2 equivalent emissions tab initially is empty, no matter if the voyage emissions or port emissions have been registered before. However, now we can benefit from the automatic data filling functionality because we have already recorded all the emissions data on a per voyage basis and port emissions in the dedicated tabs. Let's click the automatic data filling. The system informs that automatic data filling will override any records previously entered for the same reporting period. 
We don't have any previous records, therefore let's confirm. Now we can look through the tabs and see that the data from voyage and port emissions has been aggregated and relevant fields populated. In case any data must be adjusted afterwards, you can use Actions menu of the emission record to edit values or delete the whole record. In this example, we've used the voyage and port emissions data previously recorded and translated here by automatic data filling feature. However, if the automatic uh, data filling is not used, then the total annual calculations should be performed and the values should be filled in manually in the MRV and ETS tabs in the tab totals. Notice that all empty cells need to be filled in, including the zero values. Now we are ready for the step two, creation of the emission report. The creation of the emission report can be triggered directly from the corresponding annual emissions record by clicking Actions, Emission Report, Create. Or using an alternative option, Emission Report, MRV, create new. The system asks to select the reporting period first. Important to note that this drop-down list contains only possible options corresponding to existing annual emission records. In our case, it's 2023. because we have registered the emissions data for that year in the annual emissions tab. After selecting the reporting period, we shall confirm it, because it won't be possible to change it afterwards without deleting the emission report. Notice that now system displays the emission report record. You can still go back to the ship record by clicking the button Ship if needed. In the tab Measuring Equipment, click the button Load Table from MP to load the measuring equipment data from the monitoring plan. You can do the same in the tab Emission Sources and you can notice that it's already filled in from the monitoring plan because we loaded both in the Measuring Equipment tab. In the tab Annual Monitoring Results, you can check that all the data in different subtabs to make sure it's complete before the submission. Now, when we have finalized the emission report, it is time to submit it to the verifier for the verification by clicking the button Submit to Verifier. The system informs us once the emission report is submitted for verification, the company user won't be able to amend it unless verifier returns it back to company for revision. In the same window, we can mark the checkbox Generate ER Document Version to create the revision of the submitted emission report version. This is not mandatory, but can be done if company prefers to add this version to saved revisions. Let's mark this checkbox and click Confirm. Notice that 
the status of the emission report has changed to submitted to verifier and on emission report revision tab we can see the new revision version created and available for download. If we go back to my fleet page, we can notice that the emission report record has been created for the ship with reporting period 2023 and current status submitted to verifier. Now the company shall wait for the verifier to perform the verification. After verifier has performed the verification, the emission report status will be updated accordingly either to verified as satisfactory in case of successful verification or back to under revision in case any amendments are necessary. In our example, we can notice that our emission report has been verified as satisfactory. Important to remember that at this point, the company still has the legal obligations to submit the emission report to commission to finalize its workflow. To do this, let's click on Actions, MRV Emission Report Edit. Let's open Emission Report Revision tab to have a better overview on actions performed and versions available. To submit Emission Report to Commission, we shall click the button Submit to Commission. Notice the status change. This finalizes the emission report workflow in TETIS MRV system.